I have a young daughter, and while some girls obsess about horses or unicorns, my daughter's thing is dragons. <laughs> so on family movie night, we've watched Rhea and the Last Dragon, How to Train Your Dragon Part 1, How to Train Your Dragon Part 2, How to Train Your Dragon Part... You get the point. She also reads dragon books, draws portraits of dragon families. Here's the dad, by the way. So naturally, when I asked her what she wants to be for Halloween, she said, Vibe from the Flash. Yeah, I didn't see that coming either. But her second choice was a dragon. But before we can engineer her some crazy robotic dragon suit, first we need to learn about pin Pinoy p pneumatics. This is an air cylinder connected to an airline through a manual valve, meaning anytime we trigger it, the cylinder extends. And this is the kind of thing you're going to find in factories all over the world because you can use it to clamp stuff, move stuff, launch stuff without the use of electricity. But that also means that somebody has to be there actuating the valve anytime you want it to work. And honestly, it's a lot more fun if you can do it with electronics. Now, the only thing I've changed here is to add a solenoid valve, which means there's a little coil of wire in there that I can now trigger with some voltage. Whoa, <laughs> look how much higher that ball can go and how much faster I can trigger it just by touching the wire. Now just imagine what else we could do if we could operate this with a computer. Fortunately these days, a microcontroller like an Arduino is super easy to come by. Now this one's not powerful enough to run the valve on its own, so I've added a relay to the output that's more than capable of running the current and voltage to trigger the solenoid. Right now I've got it programmed so that one press of the button results in one extension of the cylinder. And you're probably thinking, okay, Mr. Engineer, you just made this thing five times more complicated than it needs to be. But check this out. If I change my selector switch, now one press of the button results in three firings of the cylinder. And if that's not fun enough, we can go to the selector again, and now it'll continue to fire as long as I have the button pressed down. And if that's not exciting enough, I've added a potentiometer so we can increase the cyclic rate. Watch this. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's actually cycling so hard that it's moving the cylinder in the vice jaws. Watch this. See, this is what I love about microcontrollers, because with some basic hardware and a switch and a potentiometer, you can make something behave completely differently with just a little bit of programming. This is, this is so cool. Now that we've seen what's possible with a microcontroller and pneumatics, it's time to design our dragon suit. We want the wings to extend and retract, but also flap like they're taking flight. To extend and retract, we'll use a single large cylinder towards the bottom, to make them flap, we'll use two smaller cylinders, one on each wing. And instead of dragging an air compressor everywhere, we're using a compressed CO2 bottle like the ones for paintball. The pressure is far too high for our system, so we're installing a regulator to bring it down where we want it. Though this build involves the usual welding, 3D printing, and machining, the hardest part is figuring out where to route the combination of wires and tubing so it doesn't tie itself in knots. To make it wearable, we're repurposing one of the kids' old backpacks, removing the pockets, and attaching the mechanics with a couple of screws. Now remember, this is a prototype, so we need a test subject that won't care if anything goes wrong, or at least be too dense to realize it if it does. And though I do know some programming, my son is quickly outpacing me with his skills. So I've asked him to at least get us started out on the right foot, meaning our test subject should have nothing to worry about. You know, on second thought, it's probably best if you don't look. But here's an issue. We can't access the programming port while the wings are pressurized. Not a showstopper, just a pain to have to work around. Okay, here goes. What? Did I lose my... Whoa! Okay, I guess the bottle backed out. Maybe the threads aren't perfect on this thing. Let's try that again. 
Whoa. <laughs> Maybe we should get a little higher pressure. Is this the slower one? What is this? Whoa. <laughs> You'll watch out for that thing. Now getting wings that move on command is pretty cool, but it still looks a little too robotic for my taste. I'm hoping that tweaking the program can make it look a little more lifelike, but so far I'm not having any luck. Okay, so what I'm trying to get is not just this axis and then this axis. I'm trying to get them to work together so it, it makes maybe a more natural flapping motion like you'd see on a dragon in the wild but it's not working for me. I don't know what, there's only two outputs on this thing. I, <laughs> I don't know how I'm, I can mess up something so simple, but uh, it's not working. We'll get it though, we'll get it. Okay, let's see you now. Whoa! <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Oh, it broke. Oh, no. Yeah, something's busted. Gah. Broken wing, broken wing. Should be up there. It's not. Okay, that's gonna be fun to fix. Because it was a welded stud that broke, it means a near complete tear down so we don't cook any rubber hoses or electronics with the heat of a fresh new weld. But just when you think things have already gotten as bad as they can get, we're reminded how tricky it can be to weld small aluminum parts. Holy! Ah. That's so much. I was just trying to touch up this one little spot and I did like three things wrong. This little post, I had it loaded up from the bottom too much. And then I don't think I had a good enough ground. I was relying on the table for it. And so the arc was just kind of spotting, just like it, 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 getting kind of intermittent. And so I got a little pedal down here. I went full throttle on the amperage to try to finish it up. And I should have just, I should have just let it cool. Aluminum does not give you a warning and it just blah, and it just shoved that thing through. And now I have this big, ugly knob thing instead of the part that I was hoping to tack in there. Okay, we're gonna see what we can do to fix this. I'm probably gonna have to machine a new part. Luckily, the part fits pretty well in the vise, allowing me to carefully machine away most of the junk, then use a punch to drive out the rest. After carefully welding in a new stud, it's time to give it another go. Okay, we are back in one piece. Let's try that again and hope it doesn't break. Crossing fingers. Back, out, up, back. Okay, so it just needs to come up longer and then come back. It's not breaking, thank goodness. <laughs> At this point, it's just a matter of continuing to make tweaks to the program and try it, then more tweaks and more trying until it finally starts to do what we want. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Try that again. Flap, 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 nice. Now I have been known to run a sewing machine from time to time, but when I need fabric to function and look awesome, I go straight to my wife. And as usual, she did not disappoint. Man, these ribs and everything make it kind of look like a t t t ah! dragon. It looks like a dragon. So button number one runs these cycles. Number two, just flaps a few times, kind of a quick flutter of the wings. Number three, if you want to just run around with it extended, showing what your wings look like, uh, It'll stay there and then toggle back to retract it so you can get around, get your candy, go to the front door, do all that stuff. So, sweet. Okay, enough. Let's see the whole thing.
Clearly there's a lot we didn't cover, like the fact that we used it so much that the bottle started to freeze up, or that we went through so much CO2 that I had to get my own tank to start to refill them. But that's why I have a smaller channel, Build 2, where I can cover stuff like that for people that want to see it. Now, did I do this project just so my daughter could have a cool Halloween costume? Well, kinda. But I also wanted to learn more about Arduinos and what you could do with them if you connected them to industrial pneumatics. Because remember, BUILD stands for Better Understanding Involves Learning and Doing. And if that kind of thing sounds cool to you, then please, like, subscribe, Look for me on Patreon and Discord, and that way we'll see you in the next video.